Hello, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. I just uh, want to do an update on the coronavirus or COVID-19 as it's uh, now called. Um, I've had a week when uh, I've just been trying to hold things together uh, health-wise, uh, but it has been on my mind. And I just want to divide this into three parts, really. That's what's happening in China, what we think might be happening in the West, and it's nothing like uh, how it's being portrayed. And then thirdly, there's the economic uh, effect. So, um, yeah, I, I'll see how I go with all of this. So I just want to start uh, uh, with this. Um, sorry, it's not where I wanted to be. Uh, okay, now this has just come across my bow just a few uh, minutes ago. In a landmark decision, Russia has temporarily banned Chinese from entry as of February the 20th, becoming the first country to ban all Chinese from entry into response uh, to the corona outbreak, according to Russian uh, news agency TASS. This is only the latest step from Russia, which has already closed most entry point, points along its 4,200-kilometer border, suspended e-visas and work visas for national Chinese nationals. Well, this is a um, uh, this is the uh, the action of a um, Chinese ally. They have a strategic relationship. So, uh, are you going to? Uh, I'm sure there'll be people who say, "Oh, this is this is racist." So, but anyway, uh, this is I just th uh, this is what I woke up to. Um, the WHO is not raising its corona risk assessment. Um, I mean, this is just absolutely unbelievable. And I'll show you why in a minute. Um, um, the uh, Chinese media is sort of painting the picture that there are, there are no more deaths and, and, uh, and hardly any more cases and everything. Um, and I just, uh, you know, and, the, you know, talking about, you know, um, uh, uh, softening some of its response. Um, and yet, so we've got this offering a lesson in contrast. The Global Times, a mainland tabloid, has continued to tweet light-hearted human interest stories in the heart of the outbreak. Today's story, a healthcare working getting married in the heart of the outbreak. Yeah, right. So, um, okay, so I just want to contrast it. We've got, uh, according to who you believe, somewhere between 150 billion uh, sorry, million people and uh, 700 million people under partial or total lockdown um, in China and in Wuhan. Uh, they were allowing people out, one person from each household out every few days to collect food. Uh, and the latest is this. So I'll just play this. Um, Okay, so I think I'll just go through that again. It's important, just in case. A written notice has just been announced 
the Wuhan municipal government has ordered from now the residential communities in the city are enclosed completely instead of under closed off management. Originally, one person in each family are permitted to go out and buy groceries every day. Now the rule has changed. From now on, nobody can go out. Previous allowance for coming out every seven days has been cancelled. Please comply with the government requirement, etc. Uh, so we've got that, and then uh, we've got this uh, that was uh, posted by uh, Hal Turner, and I haven't even watched this, I must say. Look at those bodies. Look. And now we uh, come to the West, and it's a very, very um, uh, contradictory story. Um, I'm going to just put aside the um, uh, the uh, the cruise ship in uh, Jap Yokohama, uh, Japan, and just concentrate on a couple of things. But what really interests me and kind of concerns me is the contrast between what we're seeing in China. We're seeing people just keeling over uh, dead very quickly, going into convulsions and the like. And then the reports of how uh, it is in the West. I mean, we've had very few deaths. As far as I can see, they've all been uh, Chinese and the descriptions uh, which I believe um, are of most people having you know r relatively uh, sort of mild symptoms and only a small minority kind of uh, you know having really serious symptoms so those two things just don't gel for me and I, I I'm afraid I can't work it out. Is it because they've got 5G in China? Uh, is it because things are being misreported? Uh, is it be because uh, this is a bioweapon that's been directed against um, uh, Chinese people, which it has been alleged, or what? Uh, but I just want to bring to your attention these couple of things. Um, the first of these, um, uh, I have got from three different sources, um, including Hal Turner. So I'll just use his because it's convenient. So alleged CDC text messages say over 1,000 infected with coronavirus in the USA that's being deliberately concealed. So he's saying that uh, an 18-year-old went through his father's uh, text messages on his phone and found a message, an exchange between his father and Dr. Nancy Messonnier, the director of the um, Center for the National Center for Immunization and Respiratory Diseases. And he became so outraged by what he read on his father's phone that he took a screenshot of the conversation and uploaded it as a video to his social media account online. Now, that's what, I, that's what I've seen, and I've also seen it reproduced somewhere else. That is a very careful source. Um, so this is the first part. Hi, Nancy. Hope all is well. I was just wondering if you could fill me in on what's happening with this coronavirus hearing conflicting reports about it. Is it as bad as it's said to be on the news? And should we have to worry? Thanks. Best Frank. Good to hear from you. I hope the kids and 
are doing well. We are still investigating everything. However, I can tell you this, it's worse than what is being said on the social media and nationwide news. We are trying to uh, prevent panic as that will only make things worse. Please keep that between us. There have already been over a thousand new cases in the US. I'll repeat that. There have already been over a thousand uh, cases in the US. Although on the news uh, they're just keeping things quiet for now and reporting far less, um, uh, to, uh, reporting far less to the public. Uh, wear masks when and if traveling, even nearby distances. We suspect cases in over 32 states at this point. If we don't ensure our safety measures as fast as we like, um, this could spread much faster than we expected. Please stay safe. And if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask. All the best, Nancy. And he goes back to, they're doing fine. Good, thanks. Thank you very much for the information. Absolutely, I'll keep this between us for sure. I suspect that there were many more cases than they said on TV, as so many have traveled from China to here before we knew what we were dealing with. I appreciate everything. I will keep in touch. God bless. Um, and then, I hope, oh yes, there's this. So this is also from, um, uh, from Hal Turner, he's alleging that New York State issues a gag order to police and EMS, uh, no talk to anyone about corona cases. So I'll just uh, uh, share this. Leaders and politicians in New York State have issued a gag order on medical workers and police. They're no longer able to confirm or deny any coronavirus cases. Gail Bernstein of New York State, the Erie County Health Commissioner, has told police and fire departments they are not allowed to alert the public of suspected or confirmed cases. Gail Bernstein had the Tonawanda Fire Department delete a Facebook post alerting the public that there was coronavirus cases. The North Tonawanda Fire Department took a patient to DeGraff Memorial Hospital where they are confirmed to have coronavirus. However, New York State is not letting this information get out. They have put a gag order on our brave police and firemen. Even though our firemen and police are not allowed to discuss this with the public, I had one police officer from Tonawanda contact me personally and let me know that a gag order has been placed and a confirmed case has been issued in North Tonawanda. Cases are popping up all over New York State, but because there's a gag order on healthcare workers and the police and fire department, we're not being letting known the truth. This is the same as China and it makes no sense. It's time for our leaders to stop placing gag orders on the civil servants and let them do their jobs and protect the health and safety of the public. As a spouse of a healthcare worker in New York State, I'm concerned if Buffalo has over six cases of coronavirus, how many does New York State have in total? Now it's Watertown, Rochester, and Buffalo where cases that I know have been confirmed and suspected. How many true cases are in New York City? a city hundreds of times bigger than Buffalo. I don't believe that New York City has no cases and they only have a handful of unconfirmed cases. This doesn't make any sense. Uh, well, when I started my, um, my blog almost nine years ago, it was out of concern uh, about economic uh, collapse and then I moved on to climate change uh, uh, from there. So now it seems to be coming full circle because I would never ever in my wildest days have uh, thought that collapse could come through a global uh, pandemic, uh, even though there have been many uh, sort of false kind of, well, it's, you know, story, well, not false stories, but it's come to nothing over, over, over the years. But uh, this virus has legs of that I'm absolutely sure so I'm just going to share a couple of things uh, so 
the first is this. Um, I heard uh, yesterday someone mentioned, I haven't, uh, haven't seen it in any direct you know, media or anything, but that um, entries into Hong Kong since January, I think it was since January, have declined by 90%. Uh, so I hope that's apocryphal, but I believe it might not be. So this is the, this is what came out today. HSBC to cut 35,000 jobs as profits fall by a third. HSBC has announced it will axe 35,000 jobs worldwide as part of a major restructuring after the bank profits fell by a third last year. Well, that would have been through the um, all the um, uh, the rioting and stuff. Uh, so it probably doesn't even reflect what's happening in Hong Kong right now. But just as an illustration uh, of, for those of you who are not quite so aware with peak oil and the whole sort of theory about, about uh, you know, economic collapse. Uh, I have this. Now, this came from the Trucking Association of uh, America, and it's entitled "When the Truck Stop, America Stops." And um, yeah, quarantines being one thing, no one in, no one out. That means no trucks for delivery, according to analysis by of the United States Transportation Network performed by the American Trucking Association. Here's what no trucks turns into. So this is not just trucking propaganda. Um, okay, so the first 24 hours, delivery of medical supplies, the affected areas will cease. Hospitals will run out of basic supplies such as syringes and catheters within hours. Radio pharmaceuticals will deteriorate and become unusable. Service stations will begin to run out of fuel. Manufacturers using just-in-time manufacturing will develop component shortages. Now that's already happening. US mail and other package delivery will cease. Well, I think they've already stopped sending mail and receiving mail from China, if I'm right. Within one day, food shortages will begin to develop. Automobile fuel availability and delivery will dwindle, leading to skyrocketing prices and long lines at the gas pumps. Without manufacturing components and trucks for product delivery, assembly lines will shut down, putting thousands out of work. Within two to three days, food shortages will escalate, especially at the face of hoarding and consumer panic. Supplies of essentials, such as bottled water, powdered milk, and canned meat at major retailers uh, will disappear. ATMs will run out of cash and banks will be unable to process transactions. Service stations will completely run out of fuel for autos and trucks. Garbage will start piling up in urban and suburban areas. Container ships will stand idle in ports and rail transport will be disrupted, eventually coming to a standstill. Within a week, Automobile travel will cease due to lack of fuel. Without autos and buses, many people will not be able to get to work, shop for groceries, or access uh, medical care. Hospitals will begin to exhaust oxygen supplies. Within two weeks, the nation's clean water supply will begin to run dry. Within four weeks, the nation will exhaust its clean water supply and water will be safe for drinking only after boiling. As a result, gastrointestinal illnesses will increase, further taxing an already weakened healthcare system. So this timeline presents only the primary effects of a freeze on truck travel. Secondary effects must be considered as well, such as inability to maintain telecommunication services, reduced law enforcement, increased crime, increased illness, and injury, higher death rates, and likely civil unrest. So in my mind, that illustrates a point, uh, something that I've been trying to put out for 
many years uh, the warning about what happens to supply chains when things uh, break down uh, for whatever reason. Now, the, all the governments and all the, um, all the media and the WHO, they're all trying to shut down uh, talk of this under the idea that if people were told, then they would panic. And I think it was yesterday or the day before, the um, World Health Organization had a meeting with the tech companies and other organizations on how they were going to manage what they uh, described as the infodemic. Uh, this is the idea that fake news is going to make their job so much harder and it's going to cause panic. Well, I would say that the information that we're putting out and the warnings are should be leading people not to panic, but actually to prepare just to get some food and supplies in and to get masks if you can and to get prepared for the eventuality that you might be stuck in your home uh, for weeks or even months. Now that to me is prudent planning. Now what they are doing is they are suppressing the truth of this uh, and it was said uh, that nobody should know until everybody knows. Well, when everybody knows, the, the shit is going to hit the fan. People are going to come out onto the streets. There's going to be absolute panic um, and violence like you, um, you've never seen before. And if you want to get an idea of it, uh, just watch the, um, the movie the 2011 movie Contagion. Um, so I'm going to be persevering and uh, I sincerely hope people are not panicking. I hope that they will respond as they should and just judiciously going about preparing for an eventuality. And if by some miracle it doesn't happen, then you'll just have a lot of extra food in your house. Uh, so what could possibly be wrong with that? Anyway, uh, that's enough from me. It's Seymour Rocks reporting from down under.